What's going on guys, Aldrin Astacio here with FlightPath.com. Now I'm over here in Valley Center and I'm over at my buddy's farm. He has a little bit over 120 acres of land out here. And I do have the Mavic 2 Enterprise Edition. And the one thing I wanted to do is take this thing out here. He did mention to me that he was looking at doing some sort of surveillance around the entire property because of course it is massive. And for you to get around the entire property, you basically have to take the golf cart all the way around and to get all the way around the whole property, it's about a little over two miles. And I was mentioning to him that I do have the Enterprise Edition drone and I wanted to test out how it would be if we set up some sort of mission for the drone to do a full lap around the border of his property. So we're able to save all of those waypoints, that mission into the DJI pilot app so that he's able to run it pretty much whenever he wants to. So I'm at the entrance of the property right now. I'm gonna head up to the main house and meet up with my buddy, Tony. He'll tell you a little bit more about just the property in general and what are some use cases that we wanna do with this drone right here. And if you guys are new to my channel, my name is Aldrin Astacio. I do a lot of drone tech tips, tutorials, and product reviews right here on this channel. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing and also hitting that bell to be notified when I post new videos. So we are now here, my buddy Tony. We are here at his farm. How many acres are we have here, Tony? We're, we're up to just over 120. Okay, 120 acres. What is this, Valley Center? Valley Center. And just what? east of Lake Wolford. And I will be, of course, showing you a bunch of B-roll of the property. The property is ridiculously huge. I, I didn't realize how big it was until we had to take the cart around the whole thing. And it is pretty massive. But what was the biggest thing? I mean, I called you up because basically I wanted to test out the Enterprise. But one of the things that you were like, oh, this would be perfect because of, because yeah, of what? Basically, the property divides up into four sections. And we have the Escondido Creek running right through the middle of it. So it's really hard to get across the creek. So just kind of doing perimeter action around all of it is a lot easier overhead than it is by foot. So we thought it'd be a good idea to get a drone up and be able to go around the property. Now, one of the things you didn't mention was that you did have not just animals, but at the same time, you have a main road and you did have, or just wanted to at least yeah, see we, if there's any security issues. That... Yeah, we get neighbors that'll come onto our property from different access points, but we do have a lot of wildlife that comes through here. So just being able to get up overhead and, and kind of see where, where the animal trails are and things like that is useful. Right now it's during the day. So of course you're not gonna see as much as you would at night uh, as far as what the infrared will see, but it just gives us a good idea of what is capable of a drone, I'm assuming. Also uh, what we're able to see and then uh, we'll probably try to maybe even do waypoints and that would probably be better for the animals. You said that you had animal issues. What, what was happening with the... Uh... We, have, we got mountain lions, bobcats. We used to have some goats on the property. So the, the mountain lions and bobcats were definitely coming to visit the goats. Property line goes all the way back. I mean, we're talking the main road. Yep. The, right this oak, these oak line trees are basically the Escondido Creek. So inside there is, is the creek bed and we have property on both sides of the creek. So you really, it's very difficult to traverse um, this creek bed here. We have a couple access points in the middle where we can get across. All right, so the idea is, of course, like I said, we'll toss the drone up, see what it looks like, uh, set up, ideally set up some waypoints around the perimeter just to you know have those things set already so that if he wants to ever run it again, all he has to do is pretty much just press play. With right. the infrared. Well, let's, uh, let's throw it up. Now setting up the mission was actually pretty easy. You just have to go onto the main screen. I'm gonna set up a mission flight. Once I selected the mission flight, you have the opportunity to either import an existing map or an existing mission or create a route. So being this is the first time there, I was gonna set one up. I of course had to create a route. And when you hit create a route, you have a few different options, waypoint, mapping, oblique, and linear flight mission. For this scenario, like I mentioned, I was trying to do something around the whole perimeter. Uh, what I wanna do is set up those waypoints. So I did the waypoint option. If I wanted to go back and forth and kind of sweep the area, I would do something like mapping. And the other ones I'm not gonna deal with because I'm not dealing with you know a 3D model or anything like that. So set up waypoints, click on waypoints, and you have the option to either set the waypoints if you have the map loaded. I didn't have the map loaded onto the smart controller. So what I wanna do here is do a live mission record. So I clicked on live mission. And once you click on live mission record, what it does 
is that you now fly the routes and it'll record all of the data. And while you're in process of flying the routes, you can then set those specific waypoints. So initially I took off from the main house, flew straight up in the air, and then flew to one of the sides, basically bordering the hillside of where their property sits. And to set the waypoint, pretty straightforward. You can either press the C1 on the back of the remote control, or you just press the C1 on the remote on the screen. And what that'll do is of course get all the data and set that waypoint for the altitude it's at, the speed it's going at, and you can continuously set those waypoints as you're flying. So as I was flying around the property, I would then set up all the waypoints, make sure I hit every corner, turn the drone, set up another waypoint, come all the way back around. Now, the one thing I do like about the app is that while you're flying, it actually shows you that distance between each waypoints. So I ended up setting 13 total waypoints and the distance it recorded for that flight is over 10,000 feet, 10,515 feet. It only took, took about 18 minutes to complete and the battery on this thing will last about 23, 24 minutes. So wouldn't be a problem to complete the full mission on one battery. Once you're done setting up the waypoints, bring the drone back in. All you have to do on the top left is hit that save. And now that mission is saved in the app. Now, once that mission is all saved in the app, all they have to do now, all Tony would have to do now is just launch the drone, launch the app, and then hit that waypoint and actually just hit play. Once you do hit play, the parameters will come up to ask you if these are the right ones that you use on the last one, the flight speed. So if you want to change it, you want to fly a little bit slower, a little bit faster, you can change that on the screen. You can also change things like what do you want to do after it runs that mission? Do you want the drone to hover? Do you want it to come back home? Do you want it to land in place? So once everything is set on the prepare to fly, it'll then automatically go to the first waypoint, which is basically a set right above my starting point. Not only can you change the tilt on the camera while you're flying, but you can actually change the direction of the drone while it's flying and it'll still stay on that path. But if you wanted to turn the drone in, you can actually still do that. The drone will continue on the path. If you want to spin the drone all the way around, it'll continue on the path backwards. And I thought that was really good because if you did see something down below, you're now able to still either pause the actual mission or if you just want to continue tracking it, you're able to still move that drone and it'll keep going on that path that you set. And then of course, if you wanted to stop it, you can always cancel it. But I did like you have full control over the actual drone itself. So you're not just locked into the drone flying in that straight line. You are able to turn it while it's going on the path as well as tilt the gimbal and the camera up and down. So we did let the mission run and while we were probably about 60 to 70% of the way done, while we were looking down, we knew that there were some people on the property, the people that actually drove by earlier and we were able to see them on the actual map itself. That was a little bit more difficult to see because everything with the infrared, everything, it was a nice hot day. So of course everything was, you know, showing as far as the heat map goes, showing everything was still pretty hot. But what I did like is that you can still see the people walking on screen. You can still see them on your monitor so while we were looking down we were able to see people walking on the path as well as while they were walking on it i was able to tilt the camera like i talked about i was able to turn the drone back around after we passed them and i was still able to follow them even though we saw them on the camera of course we didn't want to stop it we already knew who they were so we let the mission continue it went through all 13 waypoints and then started to come back home what i did like about it is that everything was pretty much hands off as far as it running the routes so basically at any time that one of the cameras that were in the field Field gets triggered or if at any time he just felt a little bit uncomfortable wanted to run the mission especially in the evening times when of course it's dark everything is nice and cooler and anything that has body heat like anyone walking or any animals that are on the farm would of course show up on the infrared but it was more about setting it up making sure it ran properly and having everything kind of dialed in so that if at any point he wants to run it in the evenings or at night all he has to do is technically bring it outside hit play and it'll run the exact same mission. And there it is. Hope you guys enjoyed that little mission. I was able to put the DJI Mavic Enterprise through something a little bit different, doing surveillance versus doing something like search and rescue, having this set up the mission, setting up the waypoints, plotting everything now during the day so you're able to run everything pretty much whenever you want to and having that flexibility to still control that camera while it's in the air if you are spotting something on the ground. I have a bunch of videos on the Mavic Enterprise Edition. If you guys also want to see all of the accessories that this thing does have, I have separate videos on each one of them. I'll make sure those are linked above as well as down below in the video description. As always, if you guys got some value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated and also don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. This Ultra Stasio with flightpath.com. See you guys next video. Take care.